Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Let's learn some game theory. Today's topic is symmetric zero-sum games. I cover this in Lesson 3.6 of Game Theory 101, The Complete Textbook. You can check the video description for more information about that. Essentially what we're doing in this lecture is looking at a neat property of symmetric zero-sum games that is very useful for when we're trying to find the Nash equilibria of those games. Now, to start things out, we need to first actually understand what a symmetric game is and what a zero-sum game is before we can actually get into what a symmetric zero-sum game is. So to start things off with some definitions here, let's talk about the definition of a zero-sum game. Well, that's just a game in which the sum of all players' payoffs equals zero for every outcome. So essentially, you have a game. That game can produce some number of outcomes, and if we are looking at a zero-sum game, then it must be the case that if you take any outcome from that game and you sum all of the players' payoffs together, then that sum must equal exactly zero. Now, Rock, Paper, Scissors, the game that we looked at in the last video, is one such game. It's a zero-sum game. Why is that? Well, we have nine different outcomes. If we look at each individual outcome, for example, Rock and Rock, Player 1 plays rock, player 2 plays rock. Both players get 0, so if you sum those together, that equals 0. So that qualifies as a zero-sum outcome. Obviously, this is a zero-sum outcome, and this is a zero-sum outcome as well. And it's also true that the remaining six outcomes are zero-sum. So if player 1 plays paper and player 2 plays rock, player 1 gets positive 1, player 2 gets negative 1, but 1 plus negative 1 adds to 0. And that's true for here, and here, and here, and here, and here. So that means in every single outcome, the player's payoffs sum to zero. So this is a zero-sum game. So the name zero-sum is very indicative of what's going on there. The symmetric definition is going to be a little bit more complicated, but once you've actually seen an example of what symmetry is actually meaning, it's really straightforward what symmetry is actually supposed to be doing here. So the definition for a symmetric game is a game in which if player one plays strategy A and player two plays strategy B, then player one's payoff is the same as player two's payoff if player one were to instead play B and player two were to instead play A and vice versa. So that's, again, a pretty wordy definition, but once you have actually seen an example, you'll know exactly what this is supposed to mean. And again, rock, paper, scissors is a symmetric game, so we can use rock, paper, scissors as an example. You'll notice that along the main diagonal, I have drawn a dashed line, and that is supposed to help us understand what is symmetric about this game. So obviously if we're looking at a symmetric game that's supposed to imply some evenness in what's going on if both of us are playing the same strategy then we should be getting the same payoffs otherwise that's not really symmetric right if you're getting a better payoff than me and this is supposed to be a symmetric game well if if we're playing the same thing then that's not a very symmetric game because we're not getting the same payoff for doing the exact same actions so if both players are playing rock or both players are playing paper and both players are playing scissors, you'll notice that it's symmetric because each player gets the same payoff. Now, on the other hand, if we look at a more complicated situation, for example, if player one plays paper and player two plays rock, then the payoffs are going to be symmetric along the reflection of this dashed diagonal line. So if we compare this outcome to this outcome, the player's payoffs will switch around. So imagine player one plays uh, paper and player two plays rock, then player one gets positive one, player two gets negative one. But if you switch those strategies around, so now instead of player one playing paper, player two plays paper, instead of player two playing rock, player one plays rock, essentially instead of looking at this payoff outcome, then we look at uh, this outcome instead, then we are switching the payoffs around as well. So here, player one was earning one before, now player two is earning one, and in this outcome before, player two was earning negative one, and now player one is earning negative one if we look at the reflection along the diagonal. So all we're doing here is we're switching strategies, and that's implying that we're switching payoffs as well. And that's also true down here where player one's playing scissors and player two's playing rock. If you switch those strategies around, instead of player one getting negative one, player two gets negative one. Instead of player one getting positive, or rather player two getting positive one, player one gets positive one. And there's also some symmetry between these two outcomes as well. So that's what a symmetric game looks like. And once we combine these two things together, we get a really neat theorem. And here is that theorem. In finite two-player symmetric zero-sum games, 
each player's equilibrium expected utility must equal zero. So we know what zero-sum games are, we know what symmetric games are, we know what two-player games are. Here, finite, all that means is that the players each have a finite number of pure strategies. So in Rock, Paper, Scissors, that's a finite game because player one has three pure strategies and player two has three pure strategies. And in fact, they're the same three pure strategies for both players. Now, the, the neat little part here is that we can actually give a very precise prediction about what the expected utility for both players is supposed to be in the Nash equilibrium. It's supposed to be equal to zero, and in fact, it has to be equal to zero. Otherwise, we don't have a Nash equilibrium. There's a profitable deviation if that were the case. And so to actually give some intuition behind why this theorem must be true, let's take a look at that intuition. Suppose that this theorem were not true. So suppose not. Let's show that there's going to be a contradiction implied by that. If it's not the case that both players are earning zero in the Nash equilibrium, then that means one player must receive a, receive a negative payoff and the other player must receive a positive payoff. That's by virtue of the fact that we're talking about zero-sum games here. So if the players aren't earning zero and the payoffs still have to sum up to zero, then that means one guy has to be getting a negative amount and one guy has to be getting a positive amount. So of those two players, let's take a look at the negative player, negative payoff player and think about what he can do instead. So remember that this is supposed to be a Nash equilibrium, and in a Nash equilibrium, you can't have any profitable deviations. But notice that the guy who's earning a negative amount could deviate to copying the positive payoff player's strategy. And if that's the case, then if I'm stealing your strategy, if I'm doing the exact same thing that you're doing, then the frequency that I'm getting a good outcome is going to be equal to the frequency that I get a bad outcome, and there's going to be some neutral outcomes as well. So basically everything is going to cancel out, and the payoffs are going to come up to zero if I copy your strategy. But that means that I have a profitable deviation, right? The only way a losing player can't have a profitable deviation as a result of that is if he's actually drawing an expectation. Again, going back to what I said before, if I'm getting a negative payoff, I can switch my strategy to just copy what you're doing and get zero instead. And so that means I, if I'm getting a negative payoff, if any player is getting a negative payoff, that player can just switch to the other player's strategy and get zero instead. So the only way that that can't have a profitable deviation if a player is getting a negative amount is if both players are drawing an expectation. And that means a Nash equilibrium. Well, a Nash equilibrium, again, can't allow for any profitable deviations. And so in any Nash equilibrium of a finite two-player symmetric zero-sum game, it must be the case that both players expect to earn zero. Now, there's an important note here. That's that equilibrium implies that payoffs are zero, not payoffs of zero imply equilibrium. So it's just saying, this theorem is just saying that if you have a Nash equilibrium, then it must be the case that the payoffs are equal to zero. That doesn't mean that you can point to payoffs of zero and say this is a Nash equilibrium. So for example, rock rock here, that's a, a, an outcome where both players are getting zero in expectation, right? But that is not a Nash equilibrium because player one could profitably deviate to playing paper instead and get positive one. And that's a profitable deviation, so that means this can't be a Nash equilibrium. So all we're doing is describing what a Nash equilibrium looks like. We're not actually saying, hey, you can just point here and say this is a Nash equilibrium. So that's actually an important issue that you need to be aware of, and you shouldn't make this sort of mistake because it's very obvious that this isn't a Nash equilibrium. That is the theorem about symmetric zero-sum games, and we will actually get to applying this theorem when we look at the modified version of Rock, Paper, Scissors in the next video. This theorem is going to help us find that, or actually prove that there don't exist any mixed strategy Nash equilibrium equilibria in which one player plays two strategies and mixes between two strategies and not mixes among all three strategies. So that will we'll see that in the next video, and I hope you join me then. And until then, take care. Bye now.